All right, today we're going to continue on with branching and we're going to really focus on um, branching with fractions. So just rather quickly today, um, the connections to core once again is based on place value properties and that understanding. So as we work with fractions, we're still focusing on um, decomposing and thinking about the parts and the whole and equivalency along with that commutative and associative property that we can switch the order of the fractions or the numbers we're working with and that associative property of decomposing and regrouping so we can get to those friendly or landmark fractions for example one whole and one half all right so as we work today um, I want you to keep in mind that um, this strategy is really helpful when we talk about joining and separating parts um, and so decomposing fractions you can see is a big part of what we do in fourth grade and um, adding and subtracting mixed numbers with like denominators um, and solving problems so this these will be our connections all right I also want to point out the mathematical practice standard that you will be engaging in as you work through these problems one of those standards is reason abstractly and quantitatively. So as we're working with these fractional quantities in particular today, um, we're really thinking about the quantity they represent. If we're able to decompose three-fourths into one-half and one-fourth, we really understand the value or the quantity of that fraction. So as you're working through the strategies today, um, just a reminder, if you go to tinyurl.com forward slash BPS strategies, you can pull up this branching resource um, that will help you if you want to pause the video and practice the strategy as I'm doing it along with you. Um, keep in mind I'm not doing every problem on this practice page, um, but the problems I am doing you will find. All right, so let's continue on with our branching strategy. Now, last time we got together, you'll notice that the numbers we worked with um, we were always getting to landmark or friendly numbers of 10 or multiples of 100, okay? So here, for example, we have 84 plus 200 equals 284. So the friendly landmark number we got to was 200. Um, we're good at place value. It's easy for us to work with those, okay? Let's try another problem. And if we go ahead and do a problem such as 24 plus 26, all right, another common landmark number is 25. Kids are very good at their multiples of 25 often, so they can use that to their advantage, okay? They think in quarters is how some kids explain it to me. So, for example, I could think of 26 as 1 plus 25, so now... I have 25 plus 25, and they'll think, oh, 2 quarters equals 50, okay? Let's try another one. 76 plus 24. How could we think about that? Well, we could go ahead and think of that as 75 plus 1 is 76, or the same as 76. So now we have 75 plus 25 equals 100, okay? So just keep in mind that this can be a really helpful tool with those landmark numbers as well. Um, kids are pretty good at knowing 50 and 25 equals, or excuse me, 25 and 50 equals 75, and 50 and 25 equals 100 cents or $1. So kids can use that to their advantage. All right, let's take a look at fractions. So, if we had the problem 3 fourths plus 1 half, okay, now we could find the common denominator and all of that, but really if kids are good at working with 1 half and 1 whole, these benchmark fractions can really simplify the process and we can use decomposing of fractions. Keeping in mind, fractions are numbers, okay, they're numbers that fall in between 0 and 1. So I could think about 3 fourths as being 1 fourth plus 2 fourths, or we could have listed that as 1 half. 
Keeping in mind, students really work on unit fractions in which they know one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth equals three-fourths. Or we could think of it as one-fourths and two-fourths. Now, because kids have worked with equivalency and one-half, one-half and two-fourths, or one-half and one-half, equals one whole. So we could think of this as one whole and one-fourth. So one and one-fourth. Here's our one. Okay. And then we have our one-fourth. Okay. So let's try another one. All right, let's take a look at another problem. Now notice how we're decomposing these fractions. So I'm going to think about three-fourths as one-fourth and two-fourths, or one-half, right? And I know that three-fourths plus one-fourth is one whole. One and two-fourths, or one and one-half, okay? But notice that um, third grade, we really focus on unit fractions. So recognizing that one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth equals the three-fourths, or one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth equals four-fourths, or the whole, okay? So that is um, critical when we start being flexible with how we look at fractions, okay? How about another one? We have seven-eighths plus one-half. Now, I'm good at halves and wholes. I can look at seven-eighths, and what equals one-half? Hmm, four-eighths. I know that's equivalent to one half because I've worked with fraction bars and cuisinier rods and we've done number talks with fractions. We've really engaged ourselves in thinking about the quantity of these fractions. So three fourths and four eighths is the same as seven eighths. All right, so here I get to that friendly or landmark whole. So I have one and three fourths. Okay, more. Nine sixteenths plus one half. Now, hmm, one half, sixteenths. I know eight out of sixteen is one half, and eight sixteenths plus one sixteenth gets me nine sixteenths. One and one sixteenth. Okay, what I'm not saying is that we would never get students to a point of finding that common denominator. However, notice that we can be very flexible with computing fractions if we think about those benchmarks and we think about the quantities and what they represent. Hi there, thanks for joining me today. And just to remind you, um, if you need to access the um, videos that include the strategies and the resources that go along with each of these virtual sessions, go to tinyurl.com forward slash BPS strategies. And we'll see you next time for the branching and measurement session. Thank you.